All right, today I've got another update video for my VR flight sim project made in Godot 4.0. My last update video was pretty rough around the edges, pretty rushed. I didn't put too much effort into it, and I was excited to publish some of my progress. Publishing that video gave me a good boost of motivation. I had some free time, so I worked on some more updates, and here they are. Starting off, I added simple mouse-driven camera movement to the VR player. This is slightly more complicated than standard mouse movement because I have to make extra considerations for the VR player. I didn't go with the bare minimum camera controller because I wanted to add some translational movement when you move your head, which you can see here in this clip. Of course this only affects non-VR players because players in VR will be able to move their head around as necessary. The next topic of this update is the pitch ladder. The pitch ladder is a series of horizontal lines visible on the heads-up display, used to indicate the pitch of the aircraft. The pitch ladder helps a pilot maintain awareness in limited visibility or with limited spatial reference. As you can see, the pitch ladder stays aligned to the horizon regardless of the pitch or roll of the aircraft. In the future, I plan to add more components to the HUD, including an altitude scale, an airspeed scale, and a roll indicator. Arguably, the most important addition in this update is the ability to use the in-cockpit buttons with the mouse. This is important because in my design philosophy, I don't want players to be encumbered with memorizing hotkeys. This is another aspect where the design needs special accommodations to allow both VR and flat screen interaction. My current method of interaction between the mouse and the in-cockpit buttons emulates VR interactions with mouse clicks. This works well for simple interaction types such as the buttons present in the current cockpit, but will not work with more complicated interaction types such as dials, knobs, or levers. This emulation will need continuous improvement with player feedback and further testing. I will also reiterate a few of the improvements and additions that I featured in my last video. I was stuck at a development roadblock with the implementation of Flight Assist. I struggled to find the necessary information on how Flight Assist implementations worked in real-life aircraft along with some video games. Any information was difficult to find, so I was left mostly in the dark for development. I found the key to effective Flight Assist was to control the angular rate of the aircraft. This also extended to an easy implementation of a G-limiter. Due to a close correlation in angular rate and speed, g-forces can be effectively limited through a maximum angular rate. I also did not demonstrate the camera viewport in the cockpit for external cameras and spectator views. The two buttons placed below the screen allow you to cycle through camera views. This turned out to be very helpful for debugging my aerodynamics plugin. My aerodynamics plugin, along with most of my plugins, are available and free to use on my GitHub page. Links are in the description. As with all creators on this platform, my survival is dependent on views, likes, and comments. If you enjoy this content and want to see more like it, leave a like, start a discussion in the comments, and subscribe. That's all for now. I hope you'll join me in a future video. I have a few other pieces of this puzzle in the works, but it's unclear when they'll be finished. So stay on the lookout for future videos from me, and enjoy this extra footage.